Welcome back. We're now in section 1.3, physical and chemical properties. So in this section, we will learn to identify properties of and changes in matter as physical or chemical, and identify properties of matter as extensive or intensive. So properties are the characteristics that enable us to distinguish one substance from another. So a physical property is a characteristic of matter that, that has nothing to do with its chemical composition. So some examples of this are density, color, hardness, the temperature at which it melts or boils, and its electrical conducti conductivity. So, and then on that note, a physical change is a change in the state or properties of matter that does not change its chemical composition. So for instance, when ice melts into liquid water, it's still water, it's a physical change. So here's a couple examples, butter melting, it's still a physical change. And steam condensing, so when water boils, it's still a physical change. Steam is still water. Um, sugar dissolving in water or coffee is also a physical change because it's now it's a mixture. We can still take the sugar back out. It didn't change any chemical properties. So the, how mat, one type of matter changes into another type or doesn't change is its chemical property. So this would be something like flammability or toxicity, acidity, reactivity, heat of combustion. So all these have to do with one chemical changing into another. So some examples, iron rusting. So iron is changing into an iron oxide or chromium in, in B does not rust. Okay, so these are chemical properties of iron and chromium. Iron rusts, chromium doesn't. So iron is able to react and form a new compound chromium with oxygen. Chromium does not. If you were to take uh, copper and add it to nitric acid, you would form copper nitrate and this brown gaseous nitrogen dioxide gas. Chemical changes. Lighting a match. This is a combustion reaction. So the match, the cellulose and the match and oxygen react in a chemical change to make carbon dioxide and water vapor. Cooking meat. Okay, so red meat turns brown and oxidizes the iron in it. Another chemical change. Bananas turning brown is a chemical change. So, actually, before I go to this, as you can see, though, when you have a chemical change, the physical properties also change because we've made a new chemical that has new properties. So, when the nitric acid and copper combine, we formed something new, copper nitrate, which is this, that blue liquid and that brown gas. So we went from different colored things. The banana went from being all yellow to all brown because a new compound formed. So chemical properties are often summarized with the National Fire Protection Agency or NFPA hazard diamond. And this tells us the major hazard that a chemical substance may have. So it has four parts to it. The blue part is the health hazard. Okay, so the, you know, what happens if you eat it or how it can affect your health overall. The higher the number, the more dangerous it is. The red number is the flashpoint. So that basically means fire hazard. If you have a chemical with a flashpoint of four, that means if you're below 73 degrees Fahrenheit, it can just ignite. Two is reactivity, so how, how stable the chemical is. So will it undergo detonation or a violent change if, you know, it's shaken too much or if something comes into contact with it? 
and the white is the specific hazard. So if it's an oxidizer or an acid, there, there's different little symbols here that give you some specifics to go with the chemical. So now we have some types of properties about for our compounds, for our chemicals. We have extensive and intensive properties. An extensive property depends on how much matter you have. Okay, for instance, mass, volume, heat. Okay, so if, you know, in a, an example, like I said, with mass, skinny person versus a bigger person. Okay, that depends on how much bone density, how much they've eaten. Okay, it's extensive. Volume, it depends on how much water is in your bottle or heat. It depends on what temperature you set it to. So it depends on the amount of matter present. An intensive property does not depend on the amount of matter present. So this is something like density and temperature. The temperature in my apartment, thanks to this heat wave, even with my air conditioning blasting, is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's that no matter how much air there is or how much of us there's even in the house. And density also does not depend on the amount of matter present. So water has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. We'll talk about density later, but it doesn't matter how much water I have, whether I have a swimming pool's worth or I have a drop of water, it has the same density. So intensive does not depend on the amount of matter, extensive does. So we're going to talk more about the periodic table, um, I believe in chapter two, but here it is, there's a picture of it. And this has elements grouped according to similar properties. Um, there's colors that also tell us if it's a metal, metalloid or non-metal. And we have the element symbol, the color of it that tells, if it, tells us if it's a solid, a liquid or a gas. So the periodic table gives us a lot of information on the properties of these different elements. Again, we'll talk much more about how we can use it later.